Hello. You've caught me in my most exposed and vulnerable state. Right now, I'm a snail without its shell. And without a shell, my vital organs have no protection and I could dry out. At least I can harden my skin temporarily to get me through sticky situations, but soon I will need some upgrades. Upgrades. Doesn't that hardening effect sound like... No, anyone? Just me? Okay. So the indie studio Cold Symmetry are making Mortal Shell, which is an action RPG made by a small group of developers who are hilarious, by the way. They're clearly huge Souls fans. I mean, the first yeah. time I went over to Vitaly's house, we had a two and a half hour conversation about uh, debating the merits of nihilism. So knowing that's what the developers are like, you won't be surprised to know the game is difficult, dark and atmospheric. Welcome to their PC closed beta. This is our character, the snail without a shell. Or if you want to be boring about it, this is our empty vessel which can possess the remains of old warriors and gain their unique abilities. In this demo, there were two out of four to resurrect. Teal the Acolyte and Haros the Vassal. The shells provided me with two different playstyles. The first one I like to think of as an armoured knight on a musical crusade to spread some heavy metal. The second one is an agile, shadowy rogue with far less health but far more stamina and a few more tricks up its sleeve. Let's just say one of these is way more tanky than the other and it's not that one. You unlock extra abilities for your shells at the cost of glimpses and tar. One of the abilities included in this demo was Accretion of Foresight, which lets you sometimes release poison after a repost. <laughs> Gotta love how vague sometimes is. It reminds me of my other interesting experience with poison in this game. Down in the abandoned chambers, there's a horrifying enemy who keeps his antique sword collection safely inside his own torso. It is very satisfying channeling your inner Havel the Rock and laughing as his blades ricochet off your body. That is definitely my favorite combat mechanic they've shown so far. However, eventually this creature rips off its own head and throws it at you, covering you in incapacitating poison and it sucks. There's no poison buildup indicator or anything. It's just instant COVID-19, nothing you can do about it. I foresaw that my comment section would be filled with people asking, why didn't I just cure it with items? So I searched as hard as I could through the menu, but came to realize I could not find any item to combat this poison. But as I prepared to hang up my controller and retire from my gaming career, I realized I had been played like a fiddle, or I should say a lute. Not only does this game blue ball you by hiding information about what an item actually does until you've used it an arbitrary amount of times, the more you use an item, the more familiar you get with it. Well, how do I use this? I mean, maybe I can pluck a few strings, get a beat going, you know. Okay, I'm hearing improvements. This is good. The loot is my religion. Now get this, in what might be the cruelest game design, there is an item called Taspore. You have to use it twice before it gives you any information about what it does. When I first tried it, it turned out to be toxic and it instantly poisoned me for 40 damage. Now I think it's fair to say you can probably understand why I didn't use that item again for my entire first playthrough of the demo. You know, if you touch a frying pan and you get third degree burns, it would be suboptimal, shall we say, to repeat that action, which caused so much pain. It wasn't until I played through again a second time that I came back to the tar spore and realized that I'd been deceived. Maxing out the familiarity builds up resistance to the poison. So now the item changes and the spores grant you two minutes of immunity to poison. Wow, this is so much easier. All right, next do we talk about weapons or enemies? 
Weapons. Okay, so in the demo, there was a sword and a hammer and chisel. And that's all, folks. Moving on to enemies, we have a range from old rotting musicians trying to outplay me, even though they clearly don't stand a chance, to more heavily armored boys with pointy beaks and halberds. There was even a gigantic fish that swallowed me at one point. Maybe it just thought I was a plankton. There was an optional mini boss before the abandoned chambers that later becomes a normal enemy and it's literally Gollum on steroids. One thing I love doing with these things is waiting for their jump and pound attack where they curb stomp you into the pavement unless you harden up your skin. Denied. This guy is not an enemy. You must be a gentleman. Just don't annoy him and make sure to pet his cat. You can use him as a merchant. Shall we engage in some rousing commerce? Also, make sure to call him Jabba the Hutt to his face. He loves it when you do that. <laughs> Sesta Janessa was the other NPC I encountered. She's a mysterious figure who helps you bond with your shell. And when you meet her, listen out, because she amusingly says, There won't be any merriment around a bonfire here. The no bonfires reference is factually true. They seem to have taken a different path with this game and not included bonfire checkpoints. Instead, when you get hit out of your shell and then hit again in your vulnerable state, you'll die and return to the start of the level. Now let's talk about the boss. The enslaved Grisha was the strongest challenge in the demo. So I upgraded my stuff at an anvil drenching my weapon in acid to increase my damage output and improving my self-healing. The Grisha turned out to be a wild, chained behemoth with great lances for arms. He would be unbeatable in a jousting tournament. Just for a second, let's consider the restrictions this studio faced. With such a small team of 15 people, it's impressive what they've managed to do, and I hope they grow and have a successful future. That being said, I think the combat physics and movement do suffer a bit compared to the great art design, particularly the lack of impact and floaty animations. But then I have to remind myself, you wouldn't compare a student film to a Hollywood blockbuster. In terms of team size and budget, it's just not comparable. Even though I admit that's not a perfect analogy here because a lot of the members of this dev team are actually veterans and have worked on AAA titles before, so I'm not saying skill is lacking by any means, more so the budget and team size. Sorry for that tangent, I think I just felt the need to say this mainly because I ended up kiting this boss around one of the pillars and then got an insanely powerful jump attack from out of nowhere. I don't really know how I managed to take off about half its health in one attack. Overall, this portion was satisfying, but I felt like some of the gameplay elements were breaking down just a little bit. I made sure to end it in serious style though. When you have enough resolve, which are the four orange bars above your health bar, you can perform a special weapon ability. In the case of the Hallowed Sword, you pop out a massive mechanical spike from the hill and firmly thrust towards the enemy. It's really cool. That about wraps up the end of the demo. It was a short taste of what's to come, but I appreciate it nonetheless. It's shaping up to be a very effective indie title, which knows its limitations. There is barely any customization and no multiplayer. And you know what? That is absolutely the correct decision. I can't hate on that. With a small team, you've got to focus on making your core vision come to life. And they've smashed it in my opinion. It's already clear to see there's a lot of unique underlying foundations holding the game up and it hasn't collapsed due to unrealistic ambitions. So far anyway. Thanks to Cold Symmetry for inviting me to the closed beta. Presumably some of you watching will have managed to get in and try it out as well. In terms of the final release date, word on the streets is look out for Q3 later this year, PC, PS4 and Xbox One. The PC release will initially be on the Epic Games Store, which will give them some much needed extra funding, I'm sure. And then it's planned to release again next year on Steam. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Also, your comments on my last video were so helpful. Really helped me with my mindset moving forward. So I really appreciate any help I get. Also, I can't really remember the last time I mentioned this, but we're on our way to 600,000 subscribers. I love that so many people share my sense of humor. 
I'm glad I've been able to entertain you. Well, I hope that I have.